Hello again. This time we're going to quickly um, review what we explained in the last two videos about saving RDF in files and then we'll talk about saving them in actually databases rather than as uh, you know simple text files. We spoke before about you know over the last two videos about um, um, the structure of RDF, about the, the idea of the triples, about the idea that every triple data set or every group of trip, group, group of triples is actually a graph and a graph as you know a mathematical graph as you know is uh, cons or consists of vertices and edges and we spoke about the value or, or, or the con components of a triple uh, as the subject predicate and object and um, usually the subject and predicate are um, URIs but the, pre uh, the, the value of or the object can be either a URI or maybe a literal or a blank node and we spoke that uh, you know for the graphs usually uh, you know the predicate usually or the property is the edge that connects the node which is the subject and the node which is the object or the value and we agreed that uh, nodes can be connected to each other of course using edges but when the object or when the value is actually a literal then it cannot be connected further to any other edge or to, to any other um, uh, node and uh, uh, of course apart from the original node which is its subject whereas if the node or if the object value uh, is actually um, um, a URI just like the subject then it can be connected further to other nodes and so on and so forth we spoke about that over the last two videos now we're going to as I said quickly go through saving RDF in files and databases now I've explained uh, the form the turtle format which is designed for human readability that's my favorite one you can uh, go back to the book and read about other ones read chapter 2 of, chapter two of our uh, favorite book which is this one uh, you can go back to the book and find out more about other formats but the idea of saving um, RDF as a string of bytes, i.e. in files, um, is called serialization. So you, you may come across this saying, you know, what serialization or RDF serialization, and that's basically just saving it to a, to a, to a file. So far, all the serializations or all the formats are nothing but simple text files. It's just maybe different syntax, but they're all so far are text files. Now, sometimes if we try to convert a group of tables in, in, in database, especially large tables with lots and lots and lots and lots of data, if we try to convert them all into triples and save them in one file, then that file can be huge. I, I mean, there are files you know, in gigabytes and terabytes in size with millions and trillions maybe of, um, of triples and even more than that. Yes, so what happens is the file can be too large and say, uh, keeping it as a simple text file knowing that you want to query it sometime, you want to uh, search inside that file for some data may not be the best idea. Why? Because that can be too slow. So the best option is if we have a large file uh, is to actually place it in a system which is specialized or a system that's especially or specifically designed and optimized for uh, triple data sets. Now, uh, you know, a system that ind indexes data and decides which data to load into memory when, i.e. a database management system, is the best option and can be much more efficient. Now, there are ways, of course, uh, you may not know this, but there, there are ways to save or to store RDF into relational database management systems just like for example MySQL or MySQL you can watch my own MySQL tutorials if you if you check my uh, YouTube channel or maybe an Oracle but the best way as we said before is to use a man database manager that's actually optimized for RDF triples now and a database manager which is optimized for RDF triples is usually called a triple store so the best option is to use a triple store and there are many triple stores there are commercial ones, there are open source and free ones. You can choose, for example, as an open source one, you can choose uh, Jena Foseki server, which is quite nice and easy to use. And there are commercial ones like, for example, Virtuoso uh, uh, server. 
uh, which uh, there, there was actually a, a free version of it and there's a, there's a commercial version you can try it and see what happens I actually show you simply how to use um, Jenna Forsaker server in some of my other tutorials I think I do that in my Sparkle tutorial and in my Protege tutorial when I, when I show you how you can create um, an ontology and then query it using Sparkle and load it into um, Jenna Forsaker server. The book in chapter 2 it has uh, a, a section called storing RDF in databases and the author in there gives us a nice list of things that we should check and make sure that they are there whenever we want to buy or choose an RDF triple store. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.